Hi guys, we're going to do another chi-squared by hand, but this time we're going to be looking at a 2x2 two two table. And so I'm going to make some modifications to the, uh, the manner in which I set up my intervals. Because when you do a 2x2 two two table, a chi-squared, you need to apply something called Yates Continuity Correction. And I'll show you how to do this. Uh, let's first start by setting up our intervals a little bit differently. We'll go, say, from 58 up to... Uh, say 64 and then from 65 up to 72 and uh, this column is uh, now going to be uh, garbage so that uh, hmm well I won't worry about the formatting quite yet and I've got to work out then Let's see, the number of females up to 64, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 of them. And because there's 20, presumably there must be uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, yeah, 7 of them there. Number of males between 58 and 64, it's just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And of course that must leave 15 of them over here. And we already know that our sums are going to be uh, equal to that and uh, this sum hmm, sum of that and okay I can get rid of this column altogether now sums. Okay, so uh, let's copy over the information here. Boy, let's try that again. Copy, paste, there we go. And now remember that uh, we need to calculate these by doing this times that divided by that for each cell equals this times that divided by that. This one will be equals this times that divided by that. And lastly, we've got equals uh, this times that divided by that. Ooh, something's gone wrong now. Let's try it again. Equals this times that divided by that. There we go. And my sums are still going to be the sum of everything on the row. Let's drag it down. And I'll make my sums bold because I like doing stuff like that. Okay, those are my expected frequencies, so I'm going to have to update all of my observed values. Um, so let me just copy these in to my Word document. You can see that I'm just updating what I was working on before. So uh, there they are. And uh, hmm, thinking, these are gone. Oops. Not what I want. Come on. Oh dear. Uh, help. <laughs> uh, well, all right. Sorry about the other uh, formatting. That's obviously not really the point. Um, this is where. Uh, oh yeah, not quite yet. We still got to do the expected frequencies. So uh, maybe I can take all of that. Uh, if it all goes well. Yeah, it didn't. Ah, <sighs> goodness. Oh, yeah. 
Yes. So close. Come on. You can do this. Oh. Yeah, it thinks I'm still in a table, and I don't really know how to uh, how to get rid of that. Oh, I know, I could be very clever. Yes, look at me. All right. Sorry about the tedium. I'm obviously, still getting accustomed to this interface. Oh, did it screw me again? Ugh, kills me. Uh, look, okay, I'm just going to have to ask you to take my word for it that uh, we've done the calculations all over again here. Um, you know, where we actually put in the 20 times 18 divided by, ooh, this is of course supposed to be a, uh, you know, these haven't updated, have they? Awful. These should be 22 and 40 accordingly. Sorry about that. Um, let's now have a look and see what changes when we do the chi-squared. So, uh, I mean, obviously, one thing that changes is that we've only got uh, we've got less cells, and so our observed frequencies are 5, 15, 13, and 7. The expected frequencies are 9, 11, 9, 11. Okay, if I take the difference between each of these, I mean, yeah, I should probably be doing these in Excel. Because uh, I'm going to end up with some pretty nasty numbers. So, uh, sorry, let me do this again. So, I should have done it over here. Get rid of these cells. Mm -hmm. uh, delete. There we go, shift the cells up. Okay, so let's fill them in again, sorry. 5, 13, nope, 5, 15, 13, 7, and then 9, 11, 9, 11, much easier. Good, everything else is updated beautifully, and I've got a apparent chi-squared value of 6.4646, but this is actually incorrect. Because I've got a 2 by 2 table, I need to apply Yates continuity correction. Yates continuity correction, I'm going to get rid of this sum and uh, don't even need a border anymore. Oh yeah, none. I need to create one more column. It's going to start the same as this one, but now I'm going to have to take the absolute value of the observed minus expected. So if it's positive, Sorry, if it's negative, I want it to be positive. If it's positive, it stays as positive. And so, uh, I don't know how to create an absolute value. Um, uh, hmm. I think I can do it like, uh, yes, there we go. The absolute value of these amounts and before I exit the parentheses, this is Yates continuity correction right here, minus 0 0.5, before squaring it and dividing by the expected frequencies. So, uh, I'm just going to get these in boxes. Lovely. Oh, not that one. Such a fool I am. Um, no. Oh. Yes. All right, how did I do? There we go. Fantastic. All right, so to calculate this now, I'm going to have to take. Uh, the difference between them. Uh, in fact, I need to take the absolute value of the difference between them. And then subtract 0 0.5. Uh, 
let's put this entire expression into parentheses because I'm about to raise it to the power of 2 before dividing by the expected frequencies. And I'll copy that down. And this one at the bottom will be the sum of all of them. Okay, so I got 4.94. 4.949. So, uh, in fact, I don't really even need this column at all. Let me just get rid of it. I'll shift the cells to the left. Brilliant. So, I presume then I should be able to take. Uh, hmm. this over to Word. Uh, oh, better yet. Got a better idea. Let's just copy in these values into Word. Much more clever. Just have to make the bottom one bold so it stands out as the sum. So your chi-squared value is now 4.949. Degrees of freedom now is when well, we got two rows minus one, that's the same, but we now only have two columns minus one, giving us a degree of freedom of one. Uh, I still have to update this column heading. And so you remember that this was the stuff that appeared in the um, absolute value, like that. And uh, I needed to subtract 0 0.5 before squaring and dividing by the expected value. Nothing's going to update. Oh, silly. Oh, what have I done? Go away. Yes, all right. Um, yeah, all of these values remain the same. I just uh, changed the column heading so that we've taken Yates continuity correction. You might want to have some comment about this actually. So um, so you might want to say, you know, because we have a 2 by 2 uh, table for the chi-squared test, we must apply Yates continuity correction, meaning that chi-squared is now going to be equal to The absolute value of the difference minus 0 0.5 before squaring and dividing. All right, brilliant. Now let's see how we did. Chi squared is 4.949. The critical value of chi squared at the 5% significance level for one degree of freedom can be seen to be, I think I got this one memorized, but I'll check it in a minute, 3.841. Uh, is that right? Yeah, 3.841 at 5% degree of freedom 1. So since our calculated value of chi-squared, 4.949, is greater than the critical value of chi-squared, again, we reject the null hypothesis, meaning that gender and skull circumference are not independent factors. I'm not really sure what would have happened, mind you, if we hadn't done Yates continuity correction, but uh, I'm a naturally curious person. What would have happened if we had not done this and just left it in normal form? So we'll uh, take out the minus 0 0.5 and we'll take out the absolute value function. Copy it down. I knew some is 6.46. Okay, well, still the departure is still well above, and uh, but you would you sh yeah you should do Yates continuity correction to be certain. Yates continuity correction will make your calculated value of chi squared smaller, but uh, in our case it did not make it small enough to be 
below the critical value. Since it's still above the critical or the maximum allowable value of chi-squared, that must mean we reject the null hypothesis again. Gender and skull circumference for this particular data set are not independent factors.